Okay, my very good friends, as you know, I have been thinking deeply about 5G technology and resonance frequencies and vibration and how intermolecular biological particles are going to react to these extreme vibrations. Now, why would they react? Why haven't they reacted before? Is there something new? Is there something unusual? Well, let's think about it. If you've been following mud fossils, you understand all these different colors relate to different, primarily metals. All right, these are primarily transition metals rolling around through your blood and they, they have a molecular attraction and repulsion that allows them to crab onto different minerals and, and molecules and atoms and drag them through the body and deliver them to different places in your body with the blood in the bloodstream and then they get there and another molecule says hey I got an extra electron give me that whatever it's holding on to and they make an exchange and then it goes up to the lungs and it blows out all the junk the carboxylation your 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 breath now and then of course it, it goes through the kidneys and the liver and all that other stuff and they take their little bits and pieces here and there but these primarily are the movers right well what if they were the shakers <laughs> Now, you should also know that I've been talking extensively about the light research that Rod Warren and I did. These are the pictures Rod took. This is my electronic theory of uh, electronic flood. And these, I believe, are, are the polarized particle fields. And they call them um, Higgs fields. And what it is, is this little tiny zzzz is going so fast it, can't in it, it cannot interact and then it fluffs into a big field surrounding it which is the um, this particles of I believe now those Higgs fields are scalar particles I think Rod is the first one to capture scalar particles <laughs> I'm telling you it just blows my mind but it gets it just never stops giving <laughs> That little bugger there, I think is an antiparticle. I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know what to say. It sounds insane that just a guy off the street is saying this, but we've done a lot of work, and, and I think that's what we're seeing. I mean, they call this an electron neutrino. That's what I'm showing, and there's electron showers. They're coming through like that, that little white zip, and bam, and they fluff into these um, electron showers, they call them. Right. It's called Cheryankov radiation, and they form electron showers. Exactly what I showed. Now that's that little white particle. And it is somehow interacting with a standard Higgs field and shooting off that. If that's going to grow, I do not know. But it is, it's certainly nothing that I have ever seen. Or, I, you know, this is the kind of stuff. It's, it's, uh, it's over the top, but it is what it is. I mean, it's the identical same thing that, that CERN is looking for. These are their Higgs, only they're huge. Ours are like down in this size, but they look at the same size, but you've got to get down there to that size and look at it. Rod got these pictures, and he has a slew of them. And everything that he presented backed up my theory. Now, I have dozens and dozens of, of videos on this going back several years and this is the uh, pulse red laser bup, 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 bup. just coming through here there's a particle in there it is concussing into the regions in space ahead of it and per perturbing those little white electrons into a little bit of display a little luminous luminosity now what happens here there's a, a venturi over here and I explain that's two round metal drums the light is being sucked through. It's all of a sudden accelerating. I mean, this is this what it is. And that is the particle. Zip, boom. And it's concussing with its neighbors in front of it because they all own regions literally that big around. And that is the particle. When it's coming through space, it's taken up. It's concussing just like it did back here with all the things that are in front of it. All right, so here it is. It's accelerating. 
Cheryankov radiation. It's actually charge separation. I'll show you that in a minute. That's the repulsion patterns. It's really, well, they're repulsion patterns. They're not um, interference patterns. They're repulsion because they're all trying to get away from each other. They're all basically the same polarity at this point, and they want to be away from each other. Now, now you have the Higgs field showing up. Uh, that's coming out of the other side. There's that particle I talked about. These are the particles. That's the actual particles. As they slow down, they display for two particles. Now, I believe that's a, that's a dipole electron and that's a dipole electron, up and down. Now, are they, you call them electrons, I don't call them, they call them whatever, whatever you want. They, in my world, they're dipoles. They're positive and negative. And you can see there's a dark and a light. Now, are that, is that one particle or is that two? I think it's two. I believe when it came out of the accelerator, it came out as a single particle and then they attach and then they step down. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it comes out with a double like that. I don't know. Uh, now, although I'm going to show you, a charge separated. So I'm going to say that that's, that was a part. All right, let's let's look at that carefully because I'm going to show you something that shows that that was not that was like this at one time, then it was not like this at the next time, and then it came back to like this. I don't know how that happened, but I'm going to show you. Now, this is the last one I'm going to show you right here in this palette of pictures. This one here is um, the right hand spin. It drifts to the left as it spins to the right, expanded, compressed. It's slowing, drifting to the right. I mean, I don't know what else I can say about that. All right, here you go. Same thing with the green. The greens don't, they crash a lot further out. Same architecture, though, you see it? All right, now, and here's what it looks like up close and personal. Boom, there it is. Now, I don't know whether, I, I really don't know whether it's this and this or it's that and that or it's just one thing. But it is, it looks like a torus to me, and it's got this coming up, and the white is coming over to the black. It's very, very interesting, at least. Now, I talked about charge separation, voila. Now, that is the particle coming in, or whatever it is. And here, you see that little black stuff? That's coming back out, and the white is absolutely zero, zero darkness in there. And then, what do you see here? It comes back, and it comes back in a very strange manner. You see it? It comes back in these trails. Now, very, very strange to me. Uh, so that, to me, I see charge separation. Whether it is or not, I, I can't be positive. But if it is, that that tells me this is plasma. This is this is a charge separation. And if you could charge separate. Hydro helium, I mean hydrogens, heavy hydrogen. You can create fusion, and this is a passive fusion device. This is nothing. This is just a venturi. This is a, it's the most simple, and it's passive. You don't have to do anything. You don't have any energy. You can tune this. You can use different materials. You can do all kinds of things because it's going to crush. It's a crusher. You know, I'd just say exactly what CERN's doing on only 16 zillion miles of holes in the ground to do it. You shoot it through and crush it into its own regions. One right after the other. Get out of my rear. And they just crush and they turn into plasma. Then it turns into whatever the plasma reconstructs itself as. If it, as they say, turns back into helium, well, something's left over there. Because you're starting with heavy, you're starting with five, you're ending up with four. That leaves you one. And that one, in my world, is a ton of little particles that can go out and do work. 